So this idea of Blender being an industry standard or the question of whether Blender is an industry standard is something that I keep seeing pop up and I find it a little bit annoying in a way. I'm sure in the past I've done conversations maybe on podcasts or other videos about whether it is, whether it isn't. The question doesn't make sense. What industry and what makes a standard? Majority use? For what? Many industries have suites of tools for different purposes and pipelines aren't the same between every project or every company. So when I see videos like Blender will never be an industry standard or Blender's already industry standard. I'm like, this is pointless and it's largely clickbaiting. And yeah, I get the irony of like, well, you're talking about whether Blender's an industry standard, so you're also kind of clickbaiting. But I just wanted to share a couple of insights, right? Because I'm quite disconnected from a lot of industries. At the same time, I've got friends and really close connections in important positions in certain industries, right? So all I can share is just like anecdotal reports of Blender's use. So the thing that a lot of people know is recently, you know, the award-winning film Flow was rendered with Eevee in a slightly older version of Blender, I think. I haven't actually looked into this properly, but I could ask Martinch, who I do have as a connection. In fact, it might be a good idea to maybe ask him if he wants to talk about it sometime. Martinch from the physical add-ons team that make the physical add-ons. Wow, what a fantastic sentence that was. The physical starlight and atmosphere add-ons, the physical um, celestial objects and the open waters. But from what a friend told me, there wasn't really much like compositor work done after the fact as well. I think it might just be like raw output, but there's probably some caveats to that. The point is that a tool doesn't have to be the most extreme and professional and pipeline integrated thing for you to actually make something functional and good with it. And a good example of that is the you know, a lot of people online and a lot of animators use Blender for the same kinds of reasons. Likewise, there are people that do have more demands for it, which is why Dylan Goo, for example, they have Goo Engine, but they're also working on the NPR branch for Blender, which is going to be integrated into main Blender in the future. But that's not necessary for you to make something fantastic and award-winning and AAA with any kind of tool. I mean, you've seen people that are making masterpieces with Microsoft Paint. If the will is there, then someone can do something with it. When people speak about industry standard as well, it's so often more often than not westernized visual effects like that's what people think about when they think about industry standard which means yeah these large big budget films you're thinking about big marvel movies and stuff the rather toxic visual effects houses that churn people in and out you know a little bit questionable in terms of employee rights and stuff yeah how do you get into that with your specialized portfolio that's been optimized where you compete with each other in a recruitment process for who can demonstrate the best skill set and who's going to be the most adaptable into our visual effects house pipeline maybe Maybe you grew up optimizing your artwork for that and maybe you follow people that are seniors in visual effects houses and they're very postury on social media and they give you advice for the best ways to optimize your portfolio and stuff like that. Yeah, that whole thing is a tiny subset of like the entire 3D general space. Visual effects is small. I don't even think it's the largest use case for 3D work. Pure speculation, by the way. I would imagine it's product design and construction industry just by like sheer volume of work involved, which is something that as far as I understand again, and also partial speculation, I think Autodesk have more of a handover as they optimize their business model more for the licensing on that side of things. In highly specialized types of industries like that, you can charge more per seat and over time because the reliance on tools is higher, which is also why I think taking over the education process has always been a tactic for companies to embed a sense of reliance on studios and production companies to keep paying those license fees because it costs to retrain people. But again, that's not the case for every industry. Here's a little story as well. So I have a friend that's gone to Japan recently, staying there for a while, now trying to find some work. Now they told me, I can't remember if it was an anime studio or like a 3D studio, but it's something creative. They said they went for an interview. They asked him, oh, what kind of software are you used to? What do you use? He said Blender. And they said, oh yeah, we all use that here. Not like, oh, that's cool. Like, no, that's what we use. People use it everywhere. Obviously, Japan isn't just one industry. It's a whole subset of industries. But as someone that's in the Western world, and when I go to places like the Blender conference, pretty much every one can speak English, we get a very thin slice and our perception on usage is skewed. And it's also interesting as a public face Blender YouTuber, I know because I've found them and I take a look every now and again, that people re-upload my videos on Billy Billy to make them more accessible for a Chinese audience. And it's always really interesting going and reading the comments because you get people that are talking about what's in the videos and saying thank you that I would never really see. Like there's this whole other side of the world that has their own interpretation and usage of these tools integrating into their own industries. So the point is, when I see people doing videos that are like, Blender will never be an industry standard, that are like Western focused and specifically talking about hyper-specific visual effects pipelines, I sit there and I think, who the f*** 
Can you talk it like who are you talking for? Are you the voice for the world? The point is stupid whether Blender will or won't be an industry standard. It doesn't make sense. If people use it, it's a standard. It doesn't even make sense to say that, well, we'll only call it a standard if the majority of people have used it, because again, even in hyper specific pipelines like product dev, there may be a very specialized piece of software that's only used in like 2% of projects, but people know that that's still a standard because it's appropriate for those projects, if that makes sense. And Blender is perhaps one of the most adaptive and by that manner I'd say it's one of the most reliable for filling in gaps and if it's the first thing that people go to to fill in gaps in pipelines then doesn't that by definition make it the standard for that so even on the manner of large westernized AAA visual effects type work one of my best friends Ben but he's in caramel I probably need to get him to check this section did a lot of work on the new Sonic movie because a lot of it is heavily reliant on Blender not exclusively Blender but a lot of the work was Blender it was used and heavily. The point there is that in some projects, Blender is actually extremely relied upon for very large budget AAA Western films. So again, when I see people saying, oh, Blender is not going to be an industry standard for these visual effects industries because it's missing these key features and it's not reliable for a pipeline. Again, my question is, who are you actually speaking for? Because it is being used heavily and reliably in those projects. The problem with this pointless conversation is that unless you can see every single industry in every single culture around the world and every single sub company, right, hired out to work on that and their preferred pipelines and every individual in those pipelines and see on the day to day, minute by minute, how they're using something, then we can't really say whether something is or isn't a standard. And as we've already said, calling something a standard just doesn't even freaking make sense. So the whole conversation and this whole video is pointless. I guess the point Point, trying to extract one from this and I'm trying to say is stop trying to figure out whether Blender's an industry standard or not. It doesn't matter. It's already being used for like every category of work. And as the Blender development team and community contributors like Dylan Gu and add-on developers and people just pushing the limits of it do that more and more, then more and more people are going to keep using it for more and more use cases. And as new industries emerge, it will be applied to that as well, such as the movement of things. Here's another example. I have another friend who has also signed NDAs this is so annoying, but it's construction type industry related, which is again something that Autodesk tend to have a hand on. Visualization side of it, but one interesting benefit, like a time saving efficiency now with geometry nodes in Blender, is that Blender excels over other software at the visualization process because if you can feed data into geometry nodes, then you can get very reliable and bespoke designs of showing X product over why terrain slash landscape not something that's exclusive to blender houdini and other software can do that too but blender has a complex data ecosystem that makes it reliable to work with in file and that complex data ecosystem is very adaptable i know that sounds very vague i'm trying not to get people in trouble additionally even in studio so putting aside visual effects specifically we are still talking about the film industry i have a family member who even while walking around in studio he has to have communication with a lot of different departments right like every department anecdotally speaks to me sometimes and says oh they were talking about blender at work today they wanted to use it for x y or z thing and a lot of the time it's very prototypical so for me that's a demonstration of word of mouth so we've got a few interesting things here so we've got blender being used to make an international award-winning film we've got different cultures so non-westernized industries putting a large focus on blender we've got blender being used for traditional big budget AAA films in a very heavy capacity we've got construction visualization type sub industries you utilizing new features in Blender like geometry nodes. And then we've got word of mouth in high level areas of the general film industry. The point is that, yes, if you want a simple answer to that question, Blender is already an industry standard and it is being used as such. I don't think it's ever been designed as a replacement tool for something else. I think people look at things like Maya and Autodesk and they think, oh yes, well, when will Blender replace that? Why? Why does it have to? You don't drive down a street and look at someone else's car going by and think, oh yes, when will that person's car replace my car? Well, why does it have to? Both of these things are useful and they're being productive. I think it's been a benefit and really interesting having like a friend group that have their hands in different areas. Game dev and video game visual effects is an interesting one as well because it's like having this abstract perspective and sitting there and hearing collectively how everyone is reporting using Blender in such different ways and then turning around to the general YouTube community and seeing Blender is standard, Blender isn't standard. I'm thinking it's, it's already being used like it's it's being used who are you talking for like it doesn't matter is it's a kind of like it's a weird pressure point the no matter what i say in this video it's gonna roll people up which is okay right free engagement the interesting point is any argumentative comment 
will miss the point. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. I am telling you that people in pretty much every industry are using Blender for something. You don't have to believe me, but you'll figure it out eventually. But like I said, there's like a thousand different 3D industries. Visual effects is not the end of the ladder for someone. And especially not in my audience, because we fostered such a wide variety of people. Like I said, I am blessed to be connected with brilliant creative people. People that are using Blender for jewelry design, that are developing their own products. For medical visualization, oh, that's amazing. I love medical visualization. Just do you make something cool and be productive. And in the spirit of this, because this is really interesting to me, like I said, now I'm hearing a bit more about Japan and the Japan side of things. If you're from a part of the world that you think gets a bit forgotten or doesn't get as much coverage, but you happen to know about some interesting use cases for Blender, maybe it's like you're using Blender to visualize population density in like sub-Saharan Africa or something like that, you know, over like large landscapes. And like the visualization of it is then produced into reports for research papers and things like that, you know, obscure but really hyper-specific things like that that are completely valid uses for the software that people just don't usually think about. Fashion design, that's a brilliant one as well. Or previewing actual real-life stone sculptures made for people in like memorials or like cemetery tomb, like customized tomb sculptures and things like that. Reconstructing ultrasound data into three-dimensional objects so people can have like a somewhat messy but kind of cool 3D printed version version of their baby at some point during pregnancy. You know, cool real world things. Anyway, if you made it this far through the video, put the unicorn emoji in the comments and that will show me if you did make it this far. If this video annoyed anyone, grow up, you know, but it's part of the fun. Also sign up to my Patreon, exclusive content on codasol.online slash members and I have Blender tools and add-ons and artistic resources I recommend checking out Afterglow, codasol.online slash store. Sorry for the plug, but I don't do sponsorships that often. Have a great day.